Hi guys, it's Mr. Wedge and today we're going to ancient Egypt and for this project we're going to be making a cartouche which is uh, like a stone tablet. It's got a specific shape. It's almost like an oval but it's more of a it's more of a rectangle with rounded ends but it's always like a little it's almost like a name tag. So it's got uh, somebody important's name written in it. So uh, like a pharaoh or somebody important. So um, and it's written not in English, right? Not but in Egyptian hieroglyphics. So that's what we're going to do. But the first thing we're going to do is uh, kind of make this look old. So before we draw and write and all that, our cartouche, I've got a brown paint and I put a little water in it. And I'm just going to stir it up with a brush just to make a, a wash. And I'm going to use my wash to stain the paper. Now, uh, in ancient Egypt, they would write their hieroglyphics right on walls or on stone tablets, on monuments and things like that. Uh, in fact, a lot of the monuments in the United States of America that we have are kind of based on ancient Egyptian monuments. Um, but I'm just going to stain my paper just to make it look old. And uh, Egyptians had paper too, just like us. They had one of the earliest forms of paper that they made from plants. It was called papyrus. So. That's kind of what this looks like right here. I'm going to use, uh, you can either use a paper towel or a tissue to wipe it off or dab it. That'll help it dry faster. It'll also give it some texture and it'll also make it a little bit lighter. I'm just going to set this somewhere to dry. It should be dry pretty quick. Now that our paper has dried, we can draw our name on it, or anybody's name that you want, actually. Um, but we're going to write it in Egyptian hieroglyphics. So before we do that, we're going to put our name and class code on the back with a pencil. So I'm writing my name, and my class code is 3 dash something. Depends on what class you're in. Now you might be one of the handful of people in the world that can read and write Egyptian hieroglyphics, but I am not. So I have this chart here to help me. And I'm going to zoom in on it real quick to talk about what these are. So I like that I found one that uh, not only shows the letters, but it also shows what it's of. Because, you know, I can tell that that's a vulture. You know, I don't need it written right there. I can tell that that's a bird at least. But this I was wondering what it is. And this says feather. And in some places I've seen that that's a reed, like that grows, you know, out of the water near a pond or a river. Um, what else? This is a pot, right? Um, this almond shape represents a mouth. Uh, this looks like a hill, and I get that. This looks like a, this says stool, but uh, uh, it looks more like, um, almost like a ladder to me. But that's because it's an ancient Egyptian stool. We're talking about things that people had in, you know, northeastern Africa 3,000 years ago. So it's different than what we know sometimes. Cloth is interesting because it almost looks like a shirt or a towel that somebody threw over the back of a chair. But that's what cloth is. Um, you know, zigzag going across represents water and it makes the sound n, right? Um, the cup makes the sound k. Uh, I always like that a foot makes the sound b like a bee. It almost sounds like you're stomping your foot on the floor, kind of, buh, you know, it makes the sound. Um, this is half a circle and it represents a loaf of bread, so all these little pictures represent sounds. Kind of like when we talked about uh, Chinese calligraphy, those used to look like pictures of the things they were of. So anyway, we're gonna pick the symbols, the hieroglyphs, that represent the sounds, and we're gonna sound out our name, and then we're gonna spell it on the paper we made. So C, the letter C right here is pictured like a cup or a bowl, uh, but that's only if it makes the K sound, like in the name Caitlin. If it starts with a C, you'd wanna use that. Um, and if you notice, it's the same for a K, right? K is pictured with a cup. Um, but if your name starts with a C, but it makes an S sound like Celia, you'd wanna use a different symbol, like the one for, um, you know, the, the cloth because that makes the s sound. Um, yeah, and if your name is uh, starts with a C, but it makes a ch sound, like Charlie, um, you'd want to use this symbol for a tether. It's like something, it's like a rope you can 
connect things with. So anyway, pick the pick the symbols or the hieroglyphs that make the sound. So I'm going to sound my name out and my last I'm going to write my last name. You can write your first name, but my name's Wedge, so I'm going to write w right for wedge. So I have to draw a chick and then e, eh, right? The e would be the feather or the reed. And then there is a d in my name, so I might include that because it makes a hard G sound, like J, so I might include a D and a G for um, wedge. And I don't need the E on the end because it's a silent E in my name. So I need to draw a chick, um, a feather, a hand, and a pot. I've got my paper vertical because usually hieroglyphics are written top to bottom. And I'm going to be brave and just use a Sharpie, but if you want to uh, sketch it out with pencil first, then go over it with Sharpie and then erase the pencil, you can do that. So I have to draw a chick first, and you probably notice some of these are tougher than others, but just do the best you can. Uh, I notice that the chick's head is kind of round on top, it's got a straight back, like a diagonal, and then it curves up for the body. It's got a really small wing, just a, like a squiggle represents it. Um, there's an eye right there, and then there's two lines that come forward like this and then straight line on the bottom for the feet and it hooks down in the front kind of like that so there's a, a hieroglyphic uh, Egyptian symbol that represents the sound W so I'm writing my last name Wedge so um, now I have to draw a reed and it's almost like this a vertical line that comes down and it hooks at the top um, this one comes out a little bit and then it comes down and then you can fill it with other diagonal lines that are parallel to it. So there we go. Where um, I'm going to draw a hand now as best I can. So hands are always hard for me to draw. I don't know about you guys. But it's not a realistic hand. It's just a symbol that represents a hand and a wrist. And then some lines for the fingers like that. Um, and then I will draw a a pot for the G sound and it doesn't really look like a pot but like I said it's a ancient hieroglyphic symbol that represents a, a pot what it looked like in ancient Egypt which was a very long time ago alright so now that I've got my name written in hieroglyphics I'm gonna put an oval around this to make it a cartouche and I, th I think it's easy just to do two vertical lines on the sides and then just draw a rainbow on top to connect them, kind of like this. And then one on the bottom too. And then uh, there's one little extra thing. We need like a, a horizontal line down here um, to kind of uh, anchor it. And that's just a symbol that means this is uh, royalty. So I'm going to go down a little bit and I'm going to make it a little bit wider. So it's not quite connecting, kind of like that. Um, and then I'm going to wrap a bunch of, it's almost like a rope, so we can just connect it with some vertical lines. And this just represents that some, you know, threads or cord or something was wrapped around to connect it. All right. So then, this part's a little bit tricky, but if you've, if you've gotten to this part, we're going to make two dots right there. Okay, see where I made them? And then we're going to go around, just be parallel as best we can to this oval that we made and come down the sides and connect to the other dot and then I'm going to kind of hook around and go into this dot hook around and go into this dot and then uh, this can actually go straight in like this and then it looks like it's all connected so anyway you can color this in too if you want but you don't need to if you've gotten this far you've made a cartouche. So this is a ancient Egyptian project. I hope you enjoy it. Work hard. Have fun.